So in 18th century German literature, we're introduced to this amazing Baron Munchausen. And in one of his fabulous adventures, he gets out of a swamp by pulling himself up by his hair. It's a pretty neat trick if you can do it. In mathematics, we often do something like this. There's a modern idiom expressing the same concept to pull yourself up by your own bootstraps, which is really pulling yourself up from nothing. And mathematicians, also statisticians, often talk about bootstrapping, the bootstrap method. This is a term that can be applied in a way that I'll describe to you in the context of the following example. Here is a pretty amazing uh, sequence of polynomials. We start with 1, and then we go to 1 plus x. The point is that the new polynomial 1 plus x, its derivative is the previous polynomial 1. Now you can keep going with this, and I can add another term x squared over 2 and get a second polynomial, p2, whose derivative is p1. And then, well, you add another term x cubed over 6, and now you get a new polynomial, p3, whose derivative is p2. And so at each step, you're adding one more term to the previous polynomial in such a way that the new polynomial has derivative the previous one in the list. And you can find a pattern in this sequence, if you like, and play with it a bit. It's, it's pretty amazing. It keeps going forever. But what I want to show you is how these polynomials are related to the exponential function. I'll show you graphically by first of all plotting p0, which is a constant 1. Then p1 is a line. p2 is a parabola. And notice that these polynomials keep going up. Well, they have to keep going up because you're adding positive terms. And by the way, all these graphs I'm showing you are only for x positive. Don't worry about x negative for now. And let me add, for comparison, the exponential function on top of this graph. Now you've got this pretty amazing sequence of polynomials. They increase. They form an increasing sequence. But also, they all lie below the exponential function. And the limit of this sequence is the exponential function. Now, this is leading into ideas that are much bigger than we can discuss here in our course. It'll have to wait until a second course, a second semester in calculus. But for now, let me just point out some simple observations. One is that p0 is less than p1, is less than p2, less than p3, and so on. These polynomials go up, up, up. But the, uh, the other thing I want to show you is that actually all of these polynomials lie, their graphs are underneath the exponential function. Now that's a pretty ambitious goal. It sounds ambitious, but we actually have all the tools we need to do this. And the ideas look like magic, but they actually work. So, well, we're going to start with a pretty modest fact. If you're doing uh, magic, doing a magic trick, at least you use everyday things. And Baron Munchausen wanted to lift himself up, but he just started in a swamp. So you got to start somewhere. And we're starting with a very basic fact that e to the x is positive. And what can we get out of this? Well, notice that the derivative is e to the x, which, as we just said, is positive. Well, if f prime is positive, huh, that means f is increasing. What does that mean? It means if you go to the right, the graph goes up. For x positive, f of x is greater than 0. Let me rephrase that. That says exactly that e to the x is bigger than 1. And that's, of course, just for x positive. But it's bootstrapping, because you start with e to the x is greater than 0. And just like magic, you get to e to the x is bigger than 1. Well, let's do one better. Consider the new function g of x. I'll call it e to the x minus x. And this has derivative e to the x minus 1, which is positive according to what we just said on the top of the slide. If g prime is positive, 
That means G is increasing. What's that mean? Well, it means if you go to the right, the graph goes up. So G of X is bigger than G of 0. And that means E to the X is bigger than 1 plus X. I had to move a term to the right-hand side, which now you can see how we are uh, getting better and better estimates, better and better lower bounds. Why well, stop there, right? Let's keep going. Um, so e to the x is bigger than 1 plus x. Now introduce a new function, h. h of x is e to the x minus x minus x squared over 2. So h prime is e to the x minus 1 minus x. But according to what I said on the top, that is positive. h prime is positive. That means h is increasing. And that means h of x is bigger than h of 0, at least for x greater than 0. And now if you write that out and move the constant to the right-hand side, you get e to the x is bigger than 1 plus x plus x squared over 2. Okay, well, why stop there? Go one more round. Just one more round is good. So e to the x is bigger than this quadratic for x positive. Now introduce k of x, which is this new thing that I've put in an extra term. And k prime is e to the x minus 1 minus x minus x squared over 2. But we just pointed out that that is positive, at least for x positive. So if k prime is positive, that means k is increasing. Ah, well that means k of x is bigger than k of 0 whenever, k is, whenever x is greater than 0. So we got e to the x is greater than 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 6. And we can keep on going if you want, um, do as many steps of this method as you want, but it's enough to show uh, how the magic trick works. First you start with your exponential function is bigger than 0, then that means it's bigger than 1, that means it's actually bigger than 1 plus x, that means etc. You just keep going. It's like Baron Munchausen, you know, he can... How does he lift himself up? Well, if he can just pull himself up one inch, then maybe from there he can pull himself up another fraction of an inch, and then from there pull himself up even further and keep going, and eventually pull himself up all the way out of the swamp. Now let's see how we can use these bounds for something. And in a previous video, the previous video in my series, I mentioned a limit involving the exponential function I want to show you at least one way to explain how to derive that uh, limit. Now, if you look at e, x over e to the x, that is sandwiched in between 0 and x over 1 plus x plus x squared over 2. I just, If you look at the denominator, e to the x, that's bigger than the quadratic. So if you put it in the denominator, you get a less than. So if you take the limit, as x goes to infinity, well on the left you've got a 0, on the right it also goes to 0, that's one of our basic limits using limit laws, and now you have x over e to the x is trapped in between, and by the squeeze theorem that has a limit of 0. And I can write that as the limit of x e to the minus x as x goes to infinity, that limit is 0. And there are several ways that you can rewrite this limit. For example, if you replace x by minus x, then that comes out as the limit of x e to the x. As x goes to minus infinity, that limit is 0. It says the same thing. Now let's do another substitution. This time I'm going to replace x by natural log of x. So notice as x goes to 0 from the right, the natural log goes to minus infinity and that gives you this limit just by a substitution and uh, these are limits that you can find using L'Hopital's rule for us it's a little bit further along in our course so we haven't got to L'Hopital's rule yet and L'Hopital's rule is certainly a much more general tool for finding limits like this but 
it is a kind of snake oil, at least from the perspective of undergraduate calculus. Uh, we just pull a rabbit out of a hat when we use L'Hopital's rule. It's too much of a stretch at, at our level to explain why L'Hopital's rule actually works. For that, you'd need an analysis class further along. But this has been a way that I can show you ideas that I can explain all the steps and you can understand how to get limits using just what we know, using just what we know. Now I will go back and as a postscript mention that when we constructed this list of polynomials p0, p1, p2, p3 and so on, we have a sequence of polynomials that is a, approaching the exponential function and lurking behind this example is a major theme in calculus. It runs through uh, at least the second course where we learn about taking a function and approximating it by a sequence of polynomials and these are called Taylor polynomials. P1 by the way is just the linear approximation. It's a tangent line to the graph at zero and then P2 is the quadratic approximation. It's the next step in this sequence of approximations. And in second semester calculus, we learn about how to go beyond this to further and further, better and better polynomial approximations to our function, which approximate the function better and better over larger and larger intervals. Now I would suggest, and this is a worthwhile exercise, that if you have access to computer graphing software, you should try plotting these polynomials together with the exponential function yourself and see how it works and even extend toward negative x values go from minus 5 to 5 say and see what the graphs look like and even go beyond my list of polynomials to p4 p5 etc you can figure out what they should be based on the pattern that I've started this will only take you a little time, but it will open up your mind to a lot of what calculus does.